Hey there folks, Spencer Rempel here. And we got an exciting day today. The land provides, that's what I wanna say. I'm over here in the West Kootenays and we're going mushroom picking. Yeah, not magic mushrooms, forget that. We're going for money mushrooms, pine mushrooms, a rare delicacy for our Japanese friends that they'll pay some good dollars for. We can go out and make some potential good money today. Let me show you how it's done. Come on into the West Kootenays. And let me show you how the land provides. Oh, and it's gonna be a wet day. Let every time you touch a branch, you get soaked, you get rained on, but what the heck? You'll stay dry, come with me. All right, well, we are heading up a beautiful mossy trail here in the interior rainforest of British Columbia, close to Caslow, BC. This is the kind of country we're looking for on a nice rainy day, and oh, hey, looks like we're not the only ones using this trail. Whew. That there's a lot of black bear poop. And it looks like he's been eating nothing but rose hips. Well, we'll keep a sharp eye for him. Oh, and don't get fooled by these guys. It looks a lot like a pine mushroom, but you see that dip in the center? That's just a dipper, it's a poisonous mushroom worth nothing. Not even the squirrels eat them. Oh man. I am finding everything but pine mushrooms here today. This here is a piece of bone. Look at that. That's a piece of vertebrae, neck bone off a white-tailed deer. So uh, cougars use this trail as well. <laughs> well, I'm walking along, singing a song, looking for some pine mushrooms. Looking for some pine mushrooms. <laughs> hey, you guys aren't gonna believe this. This is kind of cool. So I actually found some pine mushrooms here, but this is not how they grow. This is not how you normally see them. You're keeping a sharp eye out for that color just poking up above the moss. But you can see these are all stashed and they're even pushed into the holes of the base of this tree. So uh, we've got some more competition in this area and that's a squirrel. Yeah, squirrels love mushrooms and he's saving them up for next year. But we'll leave those ones for him. We don't steal. Oh, hey, so when you go off trail, sometimes it can be hard. You get into the bush, get kind of turned around. It can be hard to tell exactly where the trail was out. So I suggest whenever you leave off the trail, you make a blaze like this, something you can see from a distance away or if you're prepared. And uh, even better is to have some ribbon so you don't hurt the tree. You mark where you came in, where you came out. A lot of times people ask me, Spence, aren't you scared you'll run into a Bigfoot? You'll run, you'll see Sasquatch. And I say, no, I have absolutely zero fear of that because I carry the one thing that all Sasquatch are deathly afraid of and avoid at all costs, a camera. Yeah, that's right. Carry a camera and a flashlight guaranteed. You'll never see Bigfoot because nobody ever has. Well, that was carrying a camera and a flashlight, I mean. The other, the others, I, I don't know. All we got is their word, but still. Okay. It looks like we got one sticking out here. This is not a real good example, but sometimes and often they're just under the surface. And really that is the color we're looking for. That there is the color that you'll see from quite a distance. It's kind of the color of birch bark and it's kind of the color of a dipper mushroom that's, a, that's poisonous and you don't want. So it's difficult to find, but you'll be surprised how sharp you get of an eye to know that exact color and to see it from 50, 60 yards away. I spotted this guy and they grow up underneath and guess who's beside him? Yeah, another one. So this one here is a real old mushroom. It's actually been chewed on by a squirrel already. Not gonna be worth a lot when you take them. When you take them out, you wanna do this. See that? All of that, that's spores. When a gut goes back in the hole, you'll be real careful to break all of that off and make sure it goes back in the hole. Give it a tap. One, two. Any spores now have come out and gone into that hole. So then we're just able to cover that up. We'll pull the next guy out. You want to go down, 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 get a finger up underneath where it starts and pull from the bottom so that you get the whole entire thing leaving that hole exposed so that you can take that off 
Get it back in that hole. Give it a couple of taps. And there we go. That's another one. So we found two. We're gonna put all these pieces back. They might grow, they might have spores for us. We're gonna look around in the moss. Oftentimes they're growing. Where there's one, there's more. But when we're done, put it all back. Don't disturb it. Make it so it'll grow again. A mushroom in the right weather can grow in three days. There we go. So we can come back and check this spot after a rain three days later. Sometimes right up underneath logs. Again, try not to disturb it. Get right down low. And try to pull it out from its very bottom without breaking it. There we go. That's a big one and that's an old one. And actually, if I squish it here, I can feel that it's squishy and it's brown at the bottom. It's too old and it has worms. That one's no good at all. We're just gonna leave it there, push it down, put some moss over it, and we'll see if it can have some spores grow. It looks like most of these are old. We're not finding any new. It's gonna be probably a few more days after a rain till we start to see the new ones pop up. We're looking at all of those again, like I said, being too old, being filled with worms. But around the old ones, we gotta be looking for the new ones that have popped up or are about to pop up. We'll just take a closer look in the moss around these to see if there's anything good. Often, they grow in a circle. And as I come around here and was looking, I find a young one right under here. So again, dig around it, get down to the root, to the tip of it. Don't break it off. Let's see if we can pull that guy out. Again, we take off all the bottom part here. Tap that off, put everything back in place like that so it can grow again. Because there we go. That's what you're looking for, a little button of a mushroom. It's nice and hard. That one there will fetch top dollar. It's a beautiful day for picking mushrooms. Let's go. All right. Whoo, doggies. I'm tired, let me tell you. If you're hiking in the West Kootenays, you're climbing, you're hiking hard, and a few hours is gonna wear you right out. Let's see how we did today, or this morning. I can tell you, it wasn't that successful of a day. I'd like to see a lot more than that. And there ain't nobody getting rich off of what we found here today. So let me just show you a little more of what they look like. We got a few of the bigger ones here. I just want to show you something like that. That's a big one. It's totally opened up. It actually has some damage on it. That would be the lowest one uh, to sit for selling price. Um, and then even like this one here, same sort of thing. No damage, but no veil. Opened up, older mushroom. Uh, large in size, but you're gonna get a lot less money for it by weight is how you sell them. Same with all of these guys here. They're all the lower quality ones because they're, they're older mushrooms. They're not just popped up is what we're looking for, but we can sell any of those guys or we can use them for ourselves. You slice them up, you fry them in butter. Oh my God, they are so good. I'll show you that yet too. These are the guys we're looking for right here. This beautiful little mushroom right here has it's veil intact, except for maybe right there, if you can see, there's a bit of a hole in it. That would give you a number two grade and a good dollar for that one. 
This is the beautiful little one they're really looking for, along with like this guy here. See, they buy these in Japan as a delicacy, and when they get these little ones here that are just so firm and nice, and they have all of the veil intact, that's the number one. You know what, they'd buy that mushroom in a little gift box, just that one mushroom for a whole pile of money. Worth it by the time it gets all the way from here to there. Mushroom buyers will be up, they come all over, they buy mushrooms every night, they take them to, to the airport and have them shipped so they get there as fresh as possible. Believe it or not, this is uh, this is a lot of a lot of the way of how we make money here in the Kootenays in the fall. So thanks for watching, folks. That's picking mushrooms in the West Kootenays. Go north. All right, mom. I want you to try one of these.